Thank you, Mr. President. You know, we began public hearings on Supreme Court nominees in 1916. And since we began those, the Senate has never denied a hearing or a vote to a pending Supreme Court nominee, never, since 1916 until last year. Last year, the Senate Republicans waged an unprecedented blockade against the nomination of Chief Judge Merrick Garland, a fine judge with impeccable credentials, strong support from both Republicans and Democrats, a man who should be on the Supreme Court today. First time since 1916 that had ever been done. But instead, they bowed to the extreme right of their party. Republicans who knew and even had said publicly before how much they respected him and how he should be a person on the Supreme Court, they refused to even meet with him, let alone give him the respect of a confirmation hearing, even though the Constitution says that we shall advise and consent, and even though each one of us has raised our hand in a solemn oath saying we're going to uphold the Constitution. So this is exactly what happened. Republicans held hostage a vacancy on the Supreme Court for a year so that their candidate for president could choose a nominee. The blockade of the Merrick Garland nomination was shameful, but I think it's also corrosive for our system of government. Candidate Donald Trump, who verbally attacked a sitting federal judge, and what Speaker Ryan called a textbook example of a racist comment, encouraged Senate Republicans to, and to quote him, delay, delay, delay. Candidate Trump then went further. He said he would outsource the vetting of potential nominees to far right organizations, many of them lobbying organizations that want to stack the judiciary with ideological conservatives who are outside the mainstream. And he promised a nominee who would overturn 40 years of jurisprudence established in Roe versus Wade. And with the selection of Judge Gorsuch, it appears as though he's trying to make good on that promise. Now, when we confirmed Judge Gorsuch for the 10th Circuit Court of Appeals, and I was a member of the Senate at the time. I knew he was conservative, but I wasn't going to do anything to block him because I hoped he would not impose his personal beliefs from the bench. In fact, at his confirmation here in 2006, Judge Gorsuch stated, precedent is to be respected and honored. <clears throat> He said it was unacceptable for a judge to try to impose his own personal views, his politics, or his personal preferences. But just last year, he tried to do that. He called for important precedents to be overturned because it did not align with his personal philosophy. From my initial review of the record, and I've just begun it, my question is whether Judge Garland meets the high standards set by, or rather Judge Gorsuch meets the high standards set by Merrick Garland, whose decisions everybody would agree were squarely within the mainstream. And with the ideological litmus test that President Trump has applied making this selection, the American people are justified to wonder whether Judge Gorsuch can truly be an independent justice. So I intend to ask him about these and other important issues in the coming months. Republicans rolled the dice last year. They subjected the Supreme Court, the American people, to a purely political gamble, ignored the Constitution, did something that had never been done before in this country. Now, I know President Trump likes to boast he won the election in a massive landslide. Well, of course he didn't. 
Secretary Clinton received more than 2.8 million votes from the American people than President Trump. But more importantly, due to Senate Republicans' political gambit, the U.S. Supreme Court clearly lost in this election. There's really no way to treat a co-equal branch of government, and certainly not the way to protect the independence of our federal judiciary, something that's the bedrock of our Constitution. The president's electoral college victory, which was far narrower than either of President Obama's victories, is hardly a mandate for any Supreme Court nominee who would turn back the clock on the rights of women, LGBT Americans, or minorities, or a nominee who would use theories last seen in the 1930s to undermine all that we've accomplished in the last 80 years. In critical programs, if he follows what these right-wing <laughs> lobbying groups who helped vet him for the president, if he follows what they want, then critical programs like Social Security and Medicare and Medicaid Key statutes include the Civil Rights Act, the Voting Rights Act, and the Clean Air Act could well be at risk. So after nearly a year of obstruction, unconstitutional, unprecedented obstruction, I really don't want to hear Republicans say we now must rush to confirm Judge Gorsuch. I know the president thinks they should, but I also wonder how seriously even he takes this. His announcement yesterday was like he was announcing the winner of a game show. I brought in these two people, and now, here's the winner. We're talking about the U.S. Supreme Court. Treat it with the respect it deserves. You know, for all Republican talks of Democrats, setting the standard with the confirmations of Justice Sotomayor and Kagan, they ignore the standard they set in the shameful treatment of Chief Judge Garland. <clears throat> in fact, I remember, and I was chairman at the time, when we set the schedule for the hearings and the vote on Justice Sonia Sotomayor, and I remember Republican leaders rushing to the floor and saying, oh, this is terrible. You're rushing it. You're moving it so fast. And I pointed out, they're setting a schedule to the day, to the day, the same as we set for Chief Justice John Roberts. And so I asked the obvious question. Are you telling me the schedule was okay for him but not okay for her. We follow the schedule. We need time to look at all these nominees. I would note, as one who has tried cases in federal courts, as a lawyer, as one who has chaired the Judiciary Committee, I would say the courts are a vital check on any administration, especially one like this that found itself on the losing side of an argument in federal court in only its first week. Lost on something that first-year law student could have told them they were going to lose. But with great political fanfare, the president issued an order. Fortunately, the order seemed for what it was. No Muslims need to show up in our country. Now, Judge Gorsuch, to be confirmed, he has to show that he's willing to uphold the Constitution, even against President Trump, even against the lobbying groups that the president had betting him. Now, his record includes a decade on the federal bench. I think the Judiciary Committee must now carefully review his decisions, 
We have to conduct a thorough, non-sparing examination of his nomination. That's what I'll do, just as I've done for every nominee, everybody currently on the Supreme Court, and many before them, whether nominated by a Republican or a Democrat. I did a thorough and unsparing examination of their nomination. The Senate deserves nothing less. More importantly, the American people deserve nothing less. And I yield the floor.